Hey, I'm Daniel and I'm weird. And today we are back in New York City. Where else? The last time we already discovered some of the craziest road infrastructure the country has to offer. A tunnel ending up in the middle of Manhattan between hundreds of skyscrapers, multi-story bridges and some of the wildest ramp configurations I've ever seen. But we only scratched the surface as it seems. There is so much more to discover, so I opened up my favorite favorite app again and flew across the most fascinating city on earth and even beyond to be fair. So in this second part we'll take a closer look at more of New York's complex road infrastructure. Connections that show how engineers had to work around rivers, subway depots and dense neighborhoods. But these somehow still aren't enough to handle the massive amounts of traffic in one of the most congested places in the country. We'll see bridges, meeting parkways on steep terrain, elevated highways built above industrial zones and interchanges where several major routes come together in a very limited space. All of these projects were built under different conditions and at different times, but they share one thing. They show how challenging it is to fit large-scale road design into a city that was mostly finished long before the car. So let's get started. Let's start right at the northern end of Manhattan, at the George Washington Bridge. It's one of the busiest crossings in the world, carrying around 300,000 vehicles every single day across the Hudson River between New Jersey and Manhattan. But what's even more interesting than the bridge itself is what happens right after you cross it. Because here in Manhattan the geography is extremely challenging to say the least. The bridge lands on top of a steep cliff in Washington Heights and engineers had to somehow connect this massive suspension bridge to the city street grid and to the Henry Hudson Parkway running far below along the river. The George Washington Bridge today is double decked, but that was not always the case. When it first opened in 1931 it only had an upper deck with six lanes. But by the 1950s traffic had grown so much that the port authority decided to add a second deck underneath, which opened in 1962. The bridge's designer Otmar Amman had actually planned for this from the very beginning. The towers and cables were built strong enough to carry an extra level decades later. Something today's infrastructure engineers definitely can learn from. That addition changed a lot about approaches on the Manhattan side. To handle traffic from both decks, new ramps and bridges had to be built or modified, connecting the GW bridge to the Trans Manhattan Expressway and the Henry Hudson Parkway below. The result is the maze we see today, with upper and lower level traffic weaving down nearly 60 meters in elevation through tight ramps carved into the rock. Right next to those ramps, apartment buildings are built directly into the cliffside, some with street level entrances at the top and facades dropping down several stories toward the river. It's one of the most dramatic examples of how transportation and housing overlap in New York. Amazing stuff, right? Crossing over to New Jersey, one of the most fascinating pieces of early highway engineering sits between Newark and Jersey City, the Pulaski Skyway. It opened in 1932, almost three decades before the interstate system even existed. And it still carries US Route 1 and 9 across the Passaic and Hackensack rivers. The Skyway was built to solve a simple but massive problem, moving traffic from Newark and Elizabeth toward the Holland Tunnel without being stopped by rail crossings, drawbridges and industrial yards. To do that, engineers raised the entire road, nearly 6 kilometers long, on a continuous steel viaduct that stays about 30 meters above the ground. It soars over factories, port facilities and wetlands, earning its nickname as New Jersey's Highway 
in the sky. But the design also came with trade-offs. Because the roadway is narrow and steep, trucks have been banned from it since the very beginning. Heavy traffic still has to use alternate routes on the ground and that's maybe for good. I personally wouldn't trust the structure handling heavy truck traffic anyway. Because over time corrosion and structural fatigue became major issues, leading to a massive rehabilitation project that started in 2014 and lasted almost a decade. New steel, concrete decks and safety barriers were installed and that work is expected to keep the structure in service well past the 2070s. More than 90 years after it opened, the Pulaski Skyway still represents a turning point in American road building. A bridge-like highway built for speed in an era before expressways even had a name. Back on the New York side, one of the most recognizable highway structures in the city runs along the Brooklyn waterfront, the Brooklyn Queens Expressway, better known as BQE. And right beneath the neighborhood of Brooklyn Heights, it does something no other highway in the city does. It splits into three levels, stacked directly on top of each other. This section, known as the Triple Cantilever, was built in the late 1940s and early 1950s as part of a major post-war expansion of New York's highway network under Robert Moses. There is simply no chance my G isn't mentioned in a New York City roads video. The challenge here was simple. How do you fit a six-lane expressway between the East River and one of the city's oldest and most historic residential areas without demolishing it? The solution was to build vertically. Engineers designed a structure with three horizontal decks, projecting out from the hillside like shells. The two lower decks carry traffic in each direction, while the top level became the Brooklyn Heights Promenade, a landscaped pedestrian walkway that offers some of the best skyline views in the city. It's one of the most famous examples of how infrastructure and urban life were merged in mid-20th century New York. From above it looks simple, but each deck has its own structural supports, expansion joints and vibration damping all squeezed into a cliff barely wide enough for an ordinary street. Today, this section carries over 120,000 vehicles per day and maintaining it has become a major challenge. The concrete and steel are decades past their design life and the city has spent years debating how to rebuild or replace it without shutting down a key part of the East River crossing network. For now though, traffic is still running and hopefully Nothing dangerous will happen in the meantime. At the southern tip of Manhattan, the Brooklyn Bridge is not only one of the most famous landmarks in New York, it's also part of a pretty complex traffic solution. While most people know it for its pedestrian walkway and its view of the skyline, the bridge is also an active part of the city's road network, carrying thousands of cars between Brooklyn and Lower Manhattan every day. What's interesting is how it actually connects to the rest of Manhattan once you reach the end. It's not only feeding directly into surface streets, but the bridge also links to the FDR Drive, the main north-south expressway running along the East River. That connection is a maze of ramps, loops and overpasses that even crisscross each other right underneath the bridge. Built in the mid-20th century, the problem engineers faced was definitely space. Lower Manhattan was already packed with buildings and the elevated East River Drive left almost no room for a full-fledged interchange. So they built vertically again, adding compact ramps that loop and curve between bridge piers and existing structures. From above it looks funny, but it's the most efficient way to channel thousands of vehicles per hour between the bridge and the highway below. The Brooklyn Bridge itself is still limited to cars and small vehicles. Trucks and buses are banned due to weight and clearance limits. In recent years, one of the car lanes was even converted into a protected bike path, reflecting how the bridge's role 
keeps evolving as travel patterns change over time. The result is a connection that combines three eras of infrastructure, a 19th century suspension bridge, a mid 20th century expressway and a 21st century adaptation for cyclists and pedestrians. Heading out to Queens, we reach one of the most complicated junctions in New York's entire road network, the Key Gardens Interchange, between the Van Wyck Expressway, Union Turnpike and the Grand Central Parkway, which kinda looks like a star. If you've ever driven to JFK Airport, you've almost certainly passed through here. This is where several major routes converge. The Van Wyck Expressway, or I-678, leading directly to JFK. The Grand Central Parkway, one of the city's original scenic parkways from the 1930s, and the Union Turnpike, a key east-west arterial road through central Queens. All of that comes together in an area that's already packed with infrastructure. Dense housing, cemeteries, rail lines and right next to the interchange one of the largest subway maintenance yards in the city. The Jamaica Yard serves multiple subway lines and stretches across dozens of tracks and service buildings, showing how road and rail infrastructure overlap here more than almost anywhere else in New York. With so little space available, the interchange became one of the city's most congested points, full of tight mergers and short ramps that were never designed for today's traffic volumes. To address this, the New York State Department of Transportation launched the Key Gardens Interchange Reconstruction Project, a multi-phase effort that started in 2010. It involved replacing aging bridges, widening lanes and creating smoother, more direct connections between the Van Wyck and the Grand Central Parkway, essential for improving access to JFK. By 2023, most of the work was complete, transforming what had been a tangle of 1950s era ramps into a safer, more efficient interchange. New York's road network might look chaotic sometimes, but every bridge, ramp and interchange tells a story of how engineers try to make a growing city work with almost no space left to build. From steep cliffs in Manhattan to industrial zones in New Jersey and the dense neighborhoods of Brooklyn and Queens, it's all part of a network that keeps millions of people moving every single day. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more videos like this, you can support my work directly on Patreon. It really helps out the channel a lot and makes it stay sponsorship free. And of course, don't forget to leave a like, hype or subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so so much for watching from the bottom of my heart and if you haven't seen the first part yet make sure to check that one out too this was new york's absolute wild road infrastructure part two bye bye